today we are going to talk about one of the very interesting parameters of the gas chromatography and this parameter is not much spoken and this is nothing but the back flash so in this video i will walk you through what is the back flash and what is the effect of the back flash and how to come out of this back flash effect so are you ready with this for this parameter and share we go with the presentation so what is the uh, what is the back flash right what is the back flash this is the topic of today's discussion so to understand this subject i would like you to have a look at this very simple diagram and this is the diagram of gas chromatography injector port you will see the the gas uh, the inlet line the gas the carrier gas inlet line from which the carrier gas will come inside the injector and you will find that there is a blue colored segment which is nothing but your septa through which you are going to make the liquid injection and then there is a space available there is a space available where your glass liner can get fit and at the end you will find the orange colored tubings which is nothing but your analytical column so this is the gas chromatography injector port so what happens when you make an injection into the injector port your liquid sample right your liquid sample goes into a vaporization and as we know that the vaporized form of the sample will need the more amount of the space because the volume will get expand and because of that you know in case if the available space is not enough to occupy the gas generated probably then you can see that your sample vaporized state will start finding the ways out and that is called as the back flash so it can get travel a little bit inside the carrier gas inlet can you see at the cursor now this is the sample accumulation because whatever vapors are formed they are not able to get accommodated inside the glass liner some of them can find the place just below the injector septum septa and this is called as the back flash this is called as the back flash and we are going to talk about you know what are the reasons behind the back flash this is the topic of today's discussion so i hope that you understand what is meaning of the back flash into the gas chromatography so let me uh, take you back to the presentation right uh, so what are the how to what are the reason you know what are the reasons for the back flash and you will find that the back flash only happens because of or because of what the expansion into the volume so what is the term which is really uh, causing the expansion of the gas volume right and i hope that you must be well aware about this very important ideal gas equation which is nothing but pv is equal to nrt and if you further simplify that you can also write that the pv is equal to small m divided by capital m into rt divided by p so v is equal to v is equal to nrt by p or v is equal to small m divided by capital m into rt divided by t this is very simple rearrangement of the same equation so with this equation we will be able to calculate the volume of the gas right volume of the gas and i am going to show you i am going to show you how you can easily understand that because the moment you understand and realize the importance of this volume expansion then you will realize you know what mitigation plans you must take into your uh, gas chromatography method development so let us assume that the injection volume is 1 microliter now here i am now going to explain you how to calculate the volume of the gaseous uh, injection right that is the sample solution you have injected into the injector port so your injection volume is 1 microliter let us assume that your injector temperature is 150 degree celsius and if you convert it into a degree kelvin it will becomes 423 kelvin the r is the gas constant and which is the 0 0.0821 liter 
atmosphere per mole per kelvin and p is equal to pressure is equal to let us say that at the given temperature in the given condition your pressure inside injector port is 14 psi and if you want to convert it into a atmosphere it will become 0.952 atmosphere or roughly we can say one atmosphere so we will take one atmosphere as a value of the pressure during the calculation so let us assume that you have two different solvents for the sample preparation the first one is what your water and the second one is methanol so let us understand what will happen with the water what will be the volume of the water okay and molecular weight of water you know it is 18 and molecular weight of methanol you know it is 32 so let me put the values of the required uh, factors into this equation to arrive at the volume so the water density assume it is 1 gram per ml molecular weight is how much it is 18 gram per mole so 1 microliter of water will actually have 0 0.001 gram of the water right so 18 gram is equal to 1 mole isn't it so 0 0.001 gram of the water will be equal to 0 0.000056 moles right and that will become our n moles uh, weight per mole right this will become our probably this will become m by m right this will become m by m or you can say n also small n also no problem so v is equal to what so substitute these values and you will find that v in this case has become 0 0.0019 liter or if you convert into ml it will become 1.9 ml so what this value states that once you inject one microliter of the sample solution made out of water right at 150 degree celsius and at around one atmospheric pressure right it is going to expand to a 1.9 ml of the volume to the 1.9 ml of the volume so let us understand you know in case in case now if your liner volume is if your glass liner volume is 0.9 ml if the glass liner volume is 0.9 ml what do you expect what do you expect do you expect that there is going to be a backflash because this 0.9 ml of the glass liner into the injector port is not sufficient to occupy 1.9 ml of the water vapor and you can certainly expect a backflash in this case let us understand what is going to happen with the methanol right molecular weight is 32 and the parameters are going to remain one and the same one microliter of the injection volume 150 degree celsius uh, you know the injector port temperature so the density of methanol is 0.8 gram per ml molecular weight is 32 gram per mole so one microliter of methanol will weigh how much gram point triple zero eight gram so the 32 gram is equal to one mole so how much point triple zero eight gram will be a moles of methanol and you will find that it is point four times zero two five moles so what is the v so just substitute the value of for the all the factors and you will realize that in this case the volume of one microliter of methanol into a gaseous vaporized state will be 0.87 ml will be a 0.87 ml so the glass volume of the glass liner is again 0.9 ml so what do you expect probably you will not expect the backflash because this 0.87 ml right of the vaporized methanol can easily get occupied inside the 0.9 ml of the glass liner so I hope these two different calculations uh, would have given the perspective of how this, uh, uh, you know, the backflash is possible just because of the different solvents. And we are going to talk about the mitigation strategies as well. So let us further understand, you know, if you understand the volume expansion, then what are the effects? What are the effects this backflash is going to bring? and there are i think seven different effects we are going to discuss the first one is the carryover right because this the moment your <clears throat> uh, 
sample solution gets accumulates inside let us say into the inlet carrier gas lines where it is a low temperature there is a low temperature area and because of that what is going to happen this is going to get condensed inside the, the carrier gas line and moment you inject the next blank injection what is going to happen this is going to appear as the carryover you will get this condensed sample solution inside again injector port and then inside the column and then you will see the response coming out of your blank injection also so this is because of what the backflash this is because of the backflash the second is poor reproducibility so this is going to change the volume of your injected amount of the sample because of the because of its getting getting deposited onto the gas in light line uh, i mean the carrier gas uh, line tubings or maybe sometimes just below the septa so that every time though you inject one microliter of the sample solution that doesn't guarantee that the entire volume is going inside the column and because of that you can have the poor reproducibility area variation from one injection to another you are certainly going to have the sample loss because of the backflash effect you can have the ghost peaks right so this decomp this uh, you know condensed amount of the sample is still lying on to the carrier gas inlet carrier gas line so in case of next analysis if you are using another product so the left over the left or amount of condensed sample solution can become the ghost peak in your new product analysis so this can also result into a ghost peak split peaks because the sample transfer may not be consistent the small amount of vapors can again flow inside the column after some time and because of that you can see the split peaks you can see the two different peaks the big split and then the small peaks appearing tailing peaks right there may be a tailing peaks you may ab observe the peaks appearing at the tailing because of the back flash so these are the six points these are the six effects which can be possible because of the back flash so how you are going to come out of this yeah how to avoid the back flash and here are the way forwards so to make you clear how you can avoid it i need to again take you to the ideal gas equation pv is equal to nrt and if you rearrange that volume is equal to so and so so what are the parameters m is what the mole m or mass you can say the m is what capital m the capital m is the molecular weight right so i am going to trace out on this part right this is the what the mass of the injected solvent so what you understand that if the more is the mass or the volume injected you will have the more amount of the volume generated but if you reduce the mass of the injection volume of the injection can you expect the, there will be a lesser volume reproduced and that is the exact point i am going to explain so use the minimum sample injection volume but don't compromise onto the <clears throat> sensitivity or detectivity of the method in case if it is possible to reduce the volume reduce that so that you will have the lesser value for m and hence the less volume of the vaporized sample the second point is linked to the capital m that is the molecular weight so what is the relation the smaller is the figure of the m molecular weight you will have the bigger amount of the volume generated or the greater is the molecular weight you can see that the smaller will be the volume of the vaporized state the same here use a sample solvent with a higher molecular weight right use a sample solvent whatever solvents you are using if they are having the higher molecular weight they will generate the lesser volume at the vaporized state isn't it interesting and just look at the few of the common solvent that we are using so water has 18 as a molecular weight dmf has 73 benzyl alcohol has 108 and dmso has 150 so which solvent is going to produce smaller volume out of these four yeah you can easily understand that the point number three is going to talk about uh, the temperature part now so if the temperature look at here in the equation the temperature is what volume is directly proportional to the temperature so higher is the temperature more will be the volume and this is the temperature of the injector port so you need to understand that what is the minimum possible temperature i can keep so that you know the condensation will not happen 
right and even uh, if the condensation is not happening then your problem is solved and that temperature so lower possible temperature is recommended so that you will have the lower volume generated out of the vaporized gas the fourth point is linked to the the pressure now see just uh, understand that the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure volume is inversely proportional to the pressure so higher is the pressure lower will be the volume generated so that is a very straightforward uh, you know the mitigation plan so have the lower higher pressure have the higher pressure inside the injector port and you will see the volume of vaporized gas little lower and so that is technique called as the pressure pulse injection so in case of split lace now this is the very popular technique people are using that is a pressure pulse injection so you are going to in increase the pressure for a certain amount of time during the injection so that whatever volume of the vaporized gas generated will be a minimum just imagine you know i will take you to the example of over here water now in this case we consider that 14 psi is the pressure how much is the pressure 14 psi just assume that if the pressure is around let us say 28 psi it will have become one atmosphere to two atmosphere if 14 psi is equal to one atmosphere then 28 psi will equal to two atmosphere and if you substitute the value of pressure as a two over here what do you expect this 1.9 will have become exactly half of it it will have become 0.9 ml so this is the uh, the, this is the impact of the pressure you can see onto the volume. I hope you understand this, right? So, if you double the pressure, right, you will get the half of the volume for the generated gas. So, this pressure pulse injection technique is also a very nice solution to avoid the backflash if it at all it is generating. Use an injection port liner with a larger volume right this next solution was is what inject the volume itself you know if the liner volume is only if the glass liner volume is 0.9 ml if you make it 1.5 ml possibly you will have the double of the space to occupy the generated vaporized state of the sample and the septum purge so if there is any uh, you know backflash possible if you have the proper septum purge then whatever the vaporized state solution is you know getting inside the septa or near to the carrier gas line it can get removed because of the septum purge so these are the six different ways to avoid the backflash so i hope you must have now understood what is the backflash right what is the backflash how to decide on to the volume of the expansion of the injected liquid sample solution what are the effects of the backflash and what are the mitigation strategies to avoid impact because of the backflash or to completely remove the backflash so thank you very much for watching this video and i will meet you soon with such kind of informative and useful videos till then take care and bye bye see you soon